Welcome to the Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. Larry is the author of over 40 books, the founder of Dove International, a worldwide family of churches and ministries in six continents, and has over 50 years of leadership experience. He and his guests will share inspirational leadership insights from their journey with God. These insights, gleaned from serving leaders in many nations, will transform your life and leadership. For more information on Larry's books and resources, visit LarryKreider.com. Welcome to the Larry Carter Leadership Podcast. Larry Carter here, and with me in the studio again today for the fifth time Woo-hoo. is Ron Meyer. Hey, it's good to be here, Larry. This Thank has you. been so much fun. We've been unpacking the fivefold ministry taken from Ron's book, The Fivefold Ministry Made Practical, and learning about modern day apostles and prophets and pastors and teachers. It's been fantastic. Today, we're going to focus in on the teaching gift. What is the teaching gift? How does somebody know if they have that gift? How does that work today in our century today? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And uh, dig into the Word to see how the teaching gift is such a blessing to so many. So, Ryan, let's open the door. How do you explain the teaching gift that's given to the church today? And let me give you a very simple definition. A teacher is someone who can take something complex mm-hmm. and make it simple that's and good. easily understood. That's good. Someone, to expand on that, someone who can take the Word and be able to share it in such a way that people can clearly understand mm. it and just clearly apply it to their personal life. Mm-hmm. Now, in the New Testament, you know, there, of course, many taught. Mm-hmm. Are any specific person you say, oh, I think that person was probably a teacher? Oh, sure. Obviously, Paul was a teacher. Exactly. He taught exactly. a lot. Uh, we find Aquila and Priscilla. Yes. They were they had a strong pastoral gift, but they were teachers. They did uh, taught a lot in their in the church yeah. that met in their home. And yeah, yeah. there's a number of others. Apostles was yes, a teacher. Yes, that's true. Yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. and, and apostle, but also also yeah. a teacher. So, uh, in light of all that, let's talk about it today. How does this gift? Work today, and how does this work with the other fivefold ministry gifts? Let's talk about the teacher. Yeah, you know, I um, I, I have a I, I teach on the five G's. Uh, so apostles govern, mm. um, um, evangelists gather, mm-hmm. uh, pastors guard. Anyway, the the uh, teachers ground. Yeah, they ground yeah. you, a prophet's guide. The, right. the teachers ground you in the Word. Right. The, the, according to Ephesians 4, they're the ones that make you immovable, uh, regardless of the tests and the trials that come, because you can say anything, but how you respond in situations will really let you know and others what you really believe. Yeah. And so, and the teacher's role mandate is to ground you in the Word. Uh, James says it's the implanted Word of God mm. that is able to save you. So that's why a teacher is so concerned about the Word uh, and so concerned the Word is taught properly. I, I can always tell when, when someone, when I have teachers when I'm preaching and I say something and I see them <laughs> scrolling scrolling right. through their Bible or, or, uh, or Googling their that kind yeah. of thing. I have had people come up and say, "I googled you three times this morning," you know, kind of thing. <laughs> so because they're they're bent is they want to make sure things right. are accurate, which is so so Praise important. Praise God for that. So so important. Yeah. So these persons with teaching gifts are sometimes misunderstood. Mm-hmm. How's that happen? Well, sometimes they're misunderstood because of their expectations. So uh, someone with a teaching gift, I mean, they read the owner's manual. They uh, right. they they are stuck in detail uh-huh. sometimes. So uh, sometimes they're misunderstood because they're they can sometimes uh, feel like. Or come across as well. You find out too if you just researched a little bit. Yeah. Why don't you research? And because that's what they do naturally. Right. So for right. Us, it's interesting. Someone with a apostolic gift, an evangelistic gift, they they can take a much shorter time to prepare a message than right. someone with a teaching gift. True. Someone with a teaching gift loves to research. They just thrive. Mm-hmm. They get as much fulfillment out of the preparation as right. they as they do the delivery. Right. As someone like myself, preparation. I love it when it. It's really flowing. Mm-hmm. I'm not a student where I can sit down and just study, right. study, study. That's just not the way right. I'm wired. Right. But I love when I can connect with people and deliver a message that I can see people responding to. A teacher, they can teach, uh, and whether anyone's responding or not, it doesn't matter. They're just yeah. teaching. They're, yeah. they're teaching the Word. They're, they're teaching. They're, they just want to get that information out. For me, 
I'm pastoral enough, I want to make sure I'm connecting. Mm -hmm. I'm apostolic enough and prophetic enough to make sure that people are connecting with the message that I'm presenting and with the Holy Spirit. So right. It's just it's just a different different right. mindset. Not right. a right, not a right or wrong. It's just mm -hmm. different. You've served, you know, obviously leaders all over the world, apostolically, prophetically all over the world, but there were many years when you were a local pastor, we, we yes. call that local leader in a local church. So from that mindset, how do you use people? How do you release people who have this teaching gift in the local church? Everyone can't preach on a Sunday morning, right. for example. Yeah, yeah. So how did you do that? Well, what I encourage is, again, people are responsible to develop their own gift. Someone with a teaching gift create a place for them to practice. Right. A small group is an excellent place. Right. But what I encourage people who have a teaching gift, it's not whether your message, whether you get to teach, it's the practice, the going through the, the, the um, training, do some studying, create a message, create a 15-minute teaching and present it to someone who is a teacher, mm -hmm. someone who is leading a small group and say, this is what I developed. Help me out. What what areas are weak? What areas are strong? That kind of thing. So I'm, again, exercising that gift mm -hmm. and looking for a place to use it, um, not demanding it, but making it myself available to mm -hmm. be used. For all of you that are listening today to this podcast, uh, again, we're in the midst of this series on the Fivefold Ministry, Apostles, Prophets, Evangelists, Pastors, and Teachers. And this is the fifth of the series. And I want you to check out the show notes. Uh, and uh, if you have not read Ron's book, Fivefold Ministry Made Practical, so much of what we're talking about, but there's so much more in the book we've not had time to talk about. And uh, again, it's my, my favorite Fivefold Ministry book, and I've mm -hmm. shared that all over the world. And I encourage you, Ron, to write more and do mm -hmm. more on this. So anyway, check it out. You can get that on an audiobook or through Amazon or through Dublin International Bookstore or wherever you, wherever you buy books. So let's talk more about this teaching gift. There are some other five-fold ministry gifts they would work better with probably. I'm assuming right. maybe the pastor. Yeah, the exactly. Right, and exactly. some would be harder. Just talk a little more about that. Sure, sure. There is there is a divine tension mm. in the five-fold. Uh, there's a there's a Explain divine that. divine yeah, yeah, tension. Yeah, there's a divine tension between the pastor and the evangelist because okay. the pastor wants to care for those that are already there. Yeah. The evangelist wants to draw others in. There's mm -hmm. a divine tension between the between the evangelist and the pastor right. because the pastor wants to take care of people right. that are already saved Correct. and the evangelist wants to bring people in. There's a divine tension between the prophetic and the teacher. The teacher wants to ground people and the prophet wants to take them forward right. in, into what is. So to understand that tension, uh, divine yeah. tension, and then the apostolic gift is able to, to nurture all that and bring that together yeah. uh, is just a beautiful thing. The teaching gift is so so important and so critical to make sure that people are grounded divine tension is a good a good way to say that so uh how does this all work in the marketplace if someone has a teaching gift to the marketplace you know in their business or their job yeah, whatever yeah, yeah. how would that flesh out they're the trainers they're the equippers okay. they're the ones you get a new piece of equipment why don't you set it up because they'll read the fine details for me i get a piece of equipment i get something i will start putting it together until i hit a snag then i'll start looking at putting it together my son as soon as we get it, he explain, He rolls out the instructions and reads over them. I'm like, I don't have time for that. I'll use that if I have a problem. So the teacher is the one who is able to build line upon line, precept upon precept. They're the ones that make sure it's built properly because they're building long term. Mm -hmm. Everyone's building long term, but they want to make sure that they build it properly so that it so that it continues to last. Yeah, we've touched on this on the on the other four podcasts, but I'd like you to use in this last podcast for those in the marketplace, for mm -hmm. those in business. Let's look at the apostle, the prophet, the evangelist, pastor, and teacher. Okay, so how do these persons function in the business world? How do they function in, in, uh, in or some or Christian organization or organization? Period. Sure. How how do they function? Like the apostle would be what in the he, marketplace? He'd, he'd probably be the leader. He'd be okay. the, he'd own the company, okay. or he'd be the responsible to grow the company. Okay. Uh, that's the way he thinks. He thinks he or she thinks expansion. They okay. think growth. They think uh, moving forward. That kind of thing. Okay. Keep building foundations. Yeah, future, building foundations for okay. making sure the foundations are proper. Okay. Uh, systems in place for the next growth. That okay. kind and of thing. And then the prophet. And the prophet is 
is seeing where the where the economy is going, where the right, business good, is going, right. what are the things that are happening that will impact business in the future. Like, what are some things that they'll get a sense of? If we don't deal with this, we're going to lose a fair amount of employees. Uh-huh. We're going to we're going to lose market share. We're mm-hmm. going to we're going to have this problem down the road. Second. So we need to deal with this today. Sometimes they have a sense of where the company should head. But they don't, they have no outlet to share that, so they just kind of sit on it. Right. And then the company comes back, or the leaders come back and say, "We're doing this." They're like, "Yeah, I could have told you told you that a year right. ago." Because that's the way they're wired. If there'd be a freedom there, they could have shared that a year right. ago and yeah. saved a lot of grief for everyone. Yeah. How about the evangelist gift? So the evangelist, as we said, is the salesman. They're right. the ones that are the branders. They they yep. sell the brand. They're the ones that are the ones that you want to you want to have them on the front lines, yep. communicating to people. Mm-hmm. They're the ones that are introduced new customers, uh, that kind of thing. This is powerful. This yeah, is powerful. So, and, and to know that this is who I am, so you don't want to put an evangelist on uh, putting the, the new piece of machinery together because they're, they're going to miss three components and it's yeah. not going to function properly. You want right. to put a teacher on that. Right. Pastor. How about the pastor in the pastor, pastor is the one. They're the HR people. Okay. They're the ones that are making sure that um, things are happening, people are being covered properly. Uh, they're the ones that look over uh, some of the, the, the benefits, the benefit package, the, the, the ones that will be always hanging at the water cooler. Someone with an evangelist say, how come she's always at the water cooler? Well, um, maybe that's because people are holding him up or they're, they're talking to him. They're the ones that people will come and say things like, hey, I've never said anything like this to anyone before, but... And then they share those kind of things. Yeah. They share interpersonal things. Yeah. They, they, they find themselves just free to talk to Beautiful. them. That's the pastoral gift. And the teacher. And the teacher is the one that they're the trainers, they're the yeah. equippers. Yeah. They're the ones that do the new software. Uh, so they're good. the ones that set up training, in-house training. Uh, they're the ones that do the research. Hey, I want to know which software is the best thing to go. Uh, have someone that has a teacher mindset, a teacher bent, they'll do the research. They love doing the research. I, so I don't like doing the research. Just pick out the two and I'll right. make the decision yep. out of those two, but I don't want to look at five other reasons right. or five other software packages. Do you think a lot of teachers end up uh, in like Bible colleges teaching, do you think, or you know, Sunday school teachers or... You talk about that. Well, those are all teachers. I don't know. I think there's many more teachers around than do that. Right. In other words, there's there's only a certain amount of, of, of people in there. But those people who do that are definitely teachers. Okay. But there is so many people that have a heart to instruct. Right. They have a heart to train. Yep. They have yep. a heart to equip. Yep. Um, in any given small group, you'll have a number of teachers within that small group that really are just looking for a place to just be used and mm-hmm. utilized. Mm-hmm. And the best thing we can do is create an opportunity for them to develop that gift. So someone, Ron, finds their gift and they find their calling, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, gift mix, whatever. Mm-hmm. What would your advice be for them? What's the next thing they should do if they figure that out? What steps should they take? What do they do with that? Where do they find accountability, training, sure, whatever? Sure, sure. So the first thing they do is is acknowledge it. That's the first thing. Mm-hmm. Second thing is to value it. Mm-hmm. I'm. Th- this is the way God's created me to be. Uh, that's the second. Third thing would be to value the other gifts mm-hmm. around them. Because again, as I, I feel like everyone has a bent toward one of those gifts. So to value the way the apostolic gift thinks, to value the way the evangelist mm-hmm. gift thinks, to value the way the prophet, the pastor, uh, to value each other and say that that person has a valuable aspect because they're bringing a part of who Jesus is. Right. And together, right. as we work together, we can extend and expand and grow the church and bring the church to a place of maturity. So. I value my gift. I realize that I'm important. There's an important part I have to play. I encourage others in their life gifting because I want to see them fulfill. And then I do whatever I can to grow that gift. I read. I listen to podcasts. I, if someone comes in to the local expression or I know someone who has that gift, mm-hmm. I ask them to pray for me. I take them out for coffee. I invest in them. Good. Instead of, in, I, 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 I'm not afraid to ask them for their input. Uh, how can I grow? What can I do differently? This is what I'm doing. What do you recommend? That kind of thing. Because I'm, 
I'm desiring to grow and I'm looking at someone who has a greater ability than I have. So I am, I'm tapping into that. We talked to one of the other ones that corn and bean grows by itself because it's in the right, right. environment. I place myself in a That's growth good. environment good. that good. will cause me to grow because I have to go through the, yes, I'll make mistakes. Yes, I'll need to have input into my life. Uh, yes, I'll be able to, I'll have to risk insecurities. There's times I'll be insecure. Uh, there's times where I, I won't feel comfortable. I need to be stretched beyond my comfort zone mm-hmm. so that I can step into all that God has for me. Lastly, the realization and the understanding that that there's so much more that God has for me to experience than what right. I'm experiencing. And He's placed me in that environment to cause me to grow. I'm submitting to those around me that He's placed me in, and I'm asking them, help me be, help me to grow, to be what God has called mm. me to be. So Jesus gave these gifts, these five mm-hmm. gifts, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, Ephesians 4, and to equip the mm-hmm. believers, all believers mm-hmm. in ministry, mm-hmm. to build up the body of Christ so we all come to the unity of the faith and the mm-hmm. knowledge of the Son of God. So really, according to that scripture, Ron, we cannot really come into unity without understanding and walking in the revelation of these five full ministry gifts. Right, right. So that's why it's so needed today in the I church mean. today. And there's such a, I appreciate so much what you've dug into this, made it practical for so many people. Again, if, if you're uh, listening maybe the first time, uh, Ron's book, Five Full Ministry Made Practical, is fantastic. Uh, it's, it's on the show notes. Check it out. Uh, it'll be a great blessing to you. I know, Ron, you also have served in different parts of the world giving training on this, and you're willing to do that. Mm-hmm. And you can find more about Ron on the, on the show notes. Ron, this has been a fantastic five 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 weeks, really. Yeah, Thank yeah you. it really has. Anything else you want to share yet about the five full ministry before we close today? I think the final thing, and probably the just the clear perspective that the fivefold gifts that um, Jesus gave is to equip people to function in their gift. Yeah. If we can see the body of Christ. If we can see those who have a strong evangelistic gift function in evangelism, mm. and we're all called the share of faith. Right, right. But if we can see those who are wired pastorally to care for people, if we can see those who are prophetic to minister to people, to encourage them, to share with them, this is what we sense the Lord is saying. If we can see the teachers grounding people mm. in the Word of God, and if we can see the apostolic birthing and laying foundation mm. that others can build upon, mm. we'll see the body of Christ functioning together with each person functioning in the bent, as I said yes. earlier, of the way they're wired, Mm -hmm. the lens that they're looking through life through, acknowledging that, yeah, this is the way God has wired me. This is the way I should function and be at peace with that and be fulfilled in that and to function in that, be secure in their identity and say, this is who I am and this is how I function, giving credibility and honor to Mm -hmm. all the other gifts around them. But this is who I am. This is what I do. So when there is a need pastorally, oh, that's what Ron does. Ron, mm-hmm. can you go cover mm-hmm. this? Or there is a need uh, to, to, we have an outreach or something like that. Oh, John, this is who you are. Can right, you lead right, that? Right. Where every person is doing and functioning the way God has called them to function. Yeah. And there's that sense of fulfillment at the end of the day. I'm doing exactly mm-hmm. what God has called me to do. And we're valuing the people around us who are different. Like yes, said, that's so well. key. That is so and key. Because we are one body. Mm-hmm. We're one body, the body of Christ. Yeah. Ron, thank you. Thank you for being uh, on these five podcasts on the Five Four Ministry Made Practical, the Apostle, Prophet, Evangelist, Pastor, and Teacher. And thank you, everyone, for joining us. Again, check out the show notes. Uh, you can learn a lot more about Ron, a lot more about the Fivefold Ministry, pick up Ron's book. And looking forward to seeing you back here again real soon on the Larry Carter Leadership Podcast. God bless you. See you next week. Thank you for listening to Larry Kreider's Leadership Podcast. If you want more information about any of Larry's books, daily devotionals, small group resources, or any other teachings, go to LarryKreider.com. 